All right, this is Mrs. Winstead. In the previous video, I went over what a chemical formula looks like and what physical and chemical changes are. And now I want to show how to balance a chemical equation. Uh, I want to add back that same caveat that I talked about at the end of the last video. You cannot learn this process if you do not do this process. You have to practice this in order to learn and understand it. So if you decide not to practice or not to try, this will not help you. You will never learn this and you will not master it. That is just a guarantee in life. You have to do things in order to learn them. So I'm going to show you a method of balancing chemical equations. There is a method given to you as an example here uh, in terms of the numbers of N on this side and this side, and number of O on this side and this side, and then they cross out the numbers as they update the coefficients. I'm going to show you a slightly different method and I'm going to start with number three here. So I'm going to start by putting a line down the middle. That separates out my reactant side from my product side. And the bottom line of balancing a chemical equation is I want to have the same number of every element on the reactant side as I have on the product side. If I don't have that, I'm not balanced and it is incorrect. So I am first going to write the symbols however many times they appear on either side of the equation. So if I look at this K, I've only got one K. This is a CL. Notice that the L is lowercase, so that means it's not a new element. CL is one element, it is chlorine. So I'm going to write CL. And then O, but I have a three here. This three cannot be changed. That means if I put anything in here, it's going to be a multiple of three now. So I have three O's. So I'm just going to write three O's just like that. Now I'm going to come over to the product side. I have 1K, I have 1Cl, and now I have two O's. So the first step of balancing a chemical equation is to figure out what number you need to put in place to balance out whatever's unbalanced. In this case, that's definitely the O's. The only place that I could put a number to fix that is going to be right here for my O2 because I have too few. So you want to start on the side that you have too few. Um, if I have a situation where I have two on one side and three on the other, I like to go for the nearest common multiple, which is going to be six, two times three. So if I wanted six O's over here, I would just need to write in a three. And now three times two is six. So there we go. Now to get six O's back on the other side, I just need to write in a two because two times three is six. Now, the only thing is that putting this two here means that I now have two K's and I have two CL's also. So I go back to the other side where I don't have enough K's or CL's and I say, well, if I've got two over here, then I need two over there. And now my chemical equation is balanced. I have the same number of K's, CL's, and O's on either side of the line. So it really helps to actually write this out or draw this out, some kind of method for keeping track of what you have. You also may have to erase and change the numbers in the coefficient. So if you have a tendency to use pen on things, this is not the time to use pen. It's not a good plan. Okay, I'm going to move down to number five so I can show you one more. Again, line down the middle. I have one NA. I have one O. I have one H. Notice that O and H are not put together. Uh, there are some circumstances where you can leave the whole uh, ionic, um, polyatomic ion together. Um, but for the most part, I think it's more helpful to write things out separately. I have one FE. I have three CLs because of that little three. On the other side, I have one NA. I'm going to skip over to O's because this O is in parentheses and there's three here. That means that there's three O's. There's also three H's. Still one FE and still one CL. Notice that I write things in like the same position on either side of the line. That way I can't get confused about what numbers are there for what. It just makes it easier to compare very quickly because right now I can look at this right off the bat and say, okay, here's the problem. There are three CLs on this side and only one over here. 
and there are three O's and H's over here and only one over here. So I'm going to start on this side. You don't have to, but you can choose. If I know that I need three CLs on this side, then that means I need to go to whatever chemical formula has a CL in it and put a three in for my coefficient. So now I have three CLs. I also have three NAs. I'll deal with that later though. I'm not too worried. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the other side now. So I know that I have three O's and three H's over here. Well, if I look at this, I've got NA, I've got O, and I've got H. I need all of that to be multiplied by three. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my three in here. That gives me three NAs, three O's, three H's. And I'm actually already balanced just with that. These two that I've left blank, you could write in a one if you really want to, but we usually don't put a one in. It's just assumed that there's only one there. But you can see right away, you've got three NAs on both sides, three O's on both sides, three H's, one FE, three CL's. So when you're going through this process, you want to try to pick the side that has too little of something, start putting in a number, rewrite your symbols, and then work back to the other side if there's too little of something on this side, and just kind of work your way back and forth. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more complicated, but that's the general process. So make sure that you practice with that, do those practice problems, and give it your best. Good luck.